What's up, everybody? Dr. Aussie Shrinks and Sneakers.com. So I'm completing my series on how to select an SRI or serotonin reuptake inhibitor, and we're going to finish off with paroxetine or Paxil in this video. Now, this happens to be one of my all-time favorite SRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Mm. Nope, not really. Actually, I'm just kidding. It's one of my least favorite medications to prescribe. I almost never use this medication unless somebody is already on the medication and responding well to it. If not, I barely ever start it. And I'm going to explain to you why in this video. So this is the problem child of the SRI medications. It is not a great choice when you're thinking about selecting one of these medications as a first line option. So I might be saying now, Dr. Rossi, why don't you like Paxil? I'm going to explain to you right here. So, first point, highest risk of serotonin withdrawal symptoms, and that is because it has the shortest half-life, and if you were to miss a dose of this medication, or you were to abruptly stop it, withdrawal symptoms are much more likely than other medications. The second point, this is the only known antidepressant medication that has the risk of birth defects. It has a it has a risk of cardiac defects in developing fetus. So you need to watch out for this if you're prescribing this medication to somebody who is either pregnant or planning to become pregnant. So watch out for birth defects. It's one of the big things to think about with Paxil. The third point, it increases suicidality in children. Now, I've said in my previous videos that there's a black box warning on all of these medications pretty much for people under the age of 24 for increased risk of suicidal ideation. However, this one seems to play out in the literature and be a little worse. And if you notice, if you think about the FDA approvals for medications for children, Paxil is not one of the ones that is approved for depression in children. It's mostly Prozac or Fluoxetine as well as Lexapro or Escitalopram. So it didn't get any approvals in children and actually has some of the worst risk for suicidal ideation. The next point is about body image, right? One of the main concerns a lot of patients come to me with is I don't want to gain weight. And that's very understandable. Nobody wants to gain weight and certainly nobody wants to gain weight because they're taking a medication. So weight gain is a very high risk with Paxil in comparison to other SRI medications. And the final thing I'll say here is that Paxil has a high risk for fatigue. So yes, that can be beneficial if you take it at night and you're already, and you're having trouble sleeping. You obviously want to be tired, but you don't want to be tired throughout your day. So for those reasons, I generally stay away from Paxil or Paroxetine. And I want to make a couple of additional points here that are, uh, that are relevant. The next point is more so about older patients. So in older patients, I like to avoid anything that's anticholinergic. And that's because the acetylcholine system is very important in memory and cognition. And if something's going to be blocking or anticholinergic, it's going to cause cognitive problems for that person. So generally speaking, as patients get older, there's higher risk of those problems, but there's also risk of anticholinergic side effects, such as urinary retention and blurry vision, which can affect elderly patients as well. So you wanna avoid those things in your patients. There's another key point though about Paxil that I'll point out here, and it's that it's the only SSRI linked to the increased risk of dementia. I mean, that's kind of a big thing to take in there, right? There's no other studies out there on SSRIs that indicate that you increase the risk of dementia, but for Paxil there is. So if you weren't concerned enough about urinary retention, blurred vision, and poor cognition, then you should be concerned about increased risk of dementia in elderly patients. The next point I'll make is similar to the points we've been making about all these medications, and that is that it is a strong inhibitor of cytochrome P450 2D6. And again, what that means is it's going to raise the drug levels of many other medications, and that is going to potentially lead to more, more side effects and more problems, and obviously drug-drug interactions. So, Paroxetine, and this is my final point, but I think it's probably the most important one, is that many people have a belief that paroxetine has a reputation as the antidepressant with the best anxiolytic or anti-anxiety properties. And 
really that's a common misconception. This is not true from the research. This is not true in the psychiatric literature. The reason people believe that is because paroxetine has many FDA approvals for anxiety disorder. So people kind of equate those approvals to um, actual and antiolytic effects. But when you read the literature, when you go through the studies, what you actually find is that this medication does not prove to be more effective in depression with anxious features and its anxiolytic effects are less or equal to other SSRIs. So it's really no better at treating anxiety. This is sort of just a misconception that's gotten you know, perpetuated over the years because it has a lot of FDA approvals for anxiety disorders. Now to wrap this video up, what I will say is that some people do respond to paroxetine. I'm sure somebody will comment in this video and say, I've been on paroxetine for X number of years and it's worked for me. That's true, some people do respond. But it's impossible to say who those patients are and with the vast array of potential side effects, I think this medication is arguably my last line option when it comes to selecting a serotonin reuptake inhibitor for treatment of depression. I'm going to hold the video there. If you guys have questions or comments about paroxetine or why I don't like it or had good responses to it, you could drop them below in the comments section. I'm happy to answer them. And please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me to keep making these videos. And that wraps our series. We covered all the different selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Thanks for watching.